Have you ever wondered why ants behave the way they do? From the way they find food to how they build intricate colonies, their behavior is nothing short of fascinating. After diving into some research, I realized that there's so much more to these tiny creatures than meets the eye. They work together in ways that mimic complex problem solving, even though each ant follows simple rules. Inspired by their collective intelligence, I decided to see if I could bring these behaviors to life in a Python simulation. So, in this video we're going to explore the incredible world of ants and take on the challenge of recreating their behavior using code. First thing we're gonna need is a plane for the ants to move around and an ant hill where they can store their food. The ant class is going to have its own coordinates, speed, direction and a boolean for carrying food. For now, ants are not able to detect food yet. They can only move the set speed in a random direction that is slightly changing every frame to simulate natural movement. Let's see how it works. It works pretty well, so let's take care of detecting and transporting food now. Each ant has a small circle around it that represents the area where it can detect food. If food is located inside the circle, ant walks towards it, picks it up and carries it back to the ant hill. After storing food, ant continues to move randomly on the plane. Ok, now that we have the basics ready, we can start to introduce some logic. In the real world, ants use pheromones to communicate with each other, so we're going to simulate something similar. Now when ant finds food, it's going to start leaving pheromones on its way back to the ant hill. In the simulation, pheromone particles are represented with this class. Each particle has its strength that fades away with time. Pheromone detection works the same way food detection does, but the circle is slightly bigger. Assuming that the pheromone trail connects food source with ant hill, I decided to program ants to follow the pheromone trail in the direction opposite to the ant hill. To figure out which pheromone particle it should walk towards, I calculate the direction to the pheromone particle and compare it to the direction to the ant hill. If they are similar, we don't want the ant to walk towards this particle, because it would mean moving towards the ant hill. So we choose another pheromone until we find one that leads further away from the ant hill. Let's run the simulation. Well, ants do get food back to the ant hill, but they get stuck on the pheromone trail a lot. It looks like they are spinning in one place and can't get out. To fix that, I decided to add a break statement so that the direction can be changed more than once per frame. I also decided to add a direction change cooldown to prevent them from getting stuck. It already looks a little bit better, but they still get stuck occasionally. After some tinkering I figured out that I should change the way ants follow the trail, so I moved around a few things in the move function. The main change I did was narrowing the cone of possible movement along the pheromone trail. That way we can prevent ants from spinning around in one place. Now that the ants are moving properly, we can work on optimization a little bit, because the simulation gets laggy when you increase the number of ants and food in the simulation. The main problem with the code is the way we check whether ant is close to food or a pheromone. We iterate over the entire list for every ant to check the distance, even if the thing we're checking is on the other side of the plane. There are a few strategies we can try out to improve the performance. First thing I tried is calculating square Euclidean distance instead of a standard one. Do not call the square root function. That may not seem much, but considering the fact that we calculate distance very often, it might improve performance a little bit. Next thing is early exits in the loops. When the ant already senses a pheromone or food nearby, there is no reason for it to look at the rest of the list, so we can break the loop. That helps, but it certainly doesn't solve the problem. Another idea I came up with is limiting the number of pheromones. Now, ants don't create pheromones every step, but rather every few steps. That way we can drastically decrease the number of things that need to be checked in each iteration. The last thing that came to my mind is spatial partitioning, but that requires a little bit more work than previous ideas. Imagine a plane and an ant that's moving on it. Now in our simulation, 
and needs to check every single object that is inside either the food list or the pheromone list. To prevent that from happening, we can split the plane into many smaller tiles and check only the tiles that are within the detectable range. That should be a game changer when it comes to efficiency. To implement this idea, I'm gonna need a class for manager that's gonna serve as a middleman between ants and objects. I'm gonna implement add and remove methods that are gonna be used by ants. Both look pretty simple. It gets a little more complicated when you're trying to figure out which tiles should be checked by every ant. The plan is to return a list of sets corresponding to tiles that are relevant to a specific ant. In order to do that, we need a method for checking whether the tile is within the detection radius of the ant. I found a function on geeks for geeks that after a small modification should take care of that problem. If the tile is relevant, I'm going to check every adjacent tile using the BFS algorithm. I'm not gonna go into the details of how traversal algorithms work, but if you'd like me to cover that topic in a separate video, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'm gonna do that. Let's see how it works. Turns out something is wrong. Simulation usually runs for one second and then it crashes. After a long time of finding a bug, I noticed that the coordinates were passed in a wrong order. Somehow I mixed up rows and columns with X and Y's and weird things were happening. I fixed it and checked once again. Now it only works on the left side of the screen. Wonderful. I finally found it, the last place where I mixed up rows and columns. There is also a small problem with crashes when ant is near the edge of the plane due to calculation. Fortunately, it can be easily fixed with a simple if statement. You can't even imagine how good it feels when it's finally working. I also had to remake a move function again and broke a few things in the process. But the simulation looks nice, so I'm gonna show it to you. It took a long time to change the code and get everything to work again, so I hope it's gonna be worth it. Let's check the performance for different numbers of ants.
As you can see, both simulations work well in the beginning, but the situation drastically changes when the ants start picking food. When we increase the number of ants to 500, the old simulation basically stops working, because of the amount of food and pheromone particles that need to be processed. The newer version handles many particles way more effectively and scales way better. Now it's time to see the final result. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll be happy to answer them.